Hi guys, this is the Audifool and for today, we're going to review the DALI Opticon 2 speakers. This is my second DALI review. The first one was the cute and cuddly Zenser ones, which I like the mid-range a lot. The vocals in the piano are quite divine, but I just found it a little bit too expensive at $400 considering the limited bass. The DALI Opticon 2 is not so cute and cuddly, so it should do a lot better. But before that, let's take a closer look. It's definitely a lot larger than the Zenser ones, and you have a larger 6.5 inch wood fiber driver coupled with a 28mm silk dome tweeter. It looks quite nice with that veneer and the black gloss with the silver highlights. The speaker grills are not magnetic though and I'm a bit wary since the holes are right next to the driver so you might accidentally push it in if you're drunk. Sensitivity is at 87dB and impedance at 4 ohms so choose an amp that could do 4 ohms. Interestingly, the frequency response is rated at 59Hz, while the Zenser 1 is lower at 53. It does actually go lower than the Zenser 1, so I'm not sure if this is correct or maybe they just don't want to sell their speakers. At the back, you have a pair of binding posts as well as the port. Overall, I'm quite happy with the way these look and definitely is one of the better looking speakers for me in the price range. Moving on to the comparison to the LS50s, for trials of the pass by subtract, the Dallys go lower than the LS50s in the third note, but the LS50s does the first and second note with more solid and grippier bass. The Dallys also has that uh, sort of a unique sound signature wherein each instrument is sort of rolled off into each other and blended and comes out better integrated than the LS50s. The LS50s, of course, have, has that more forward vocals and it's, the trebles is not as rolled off as the Dallys. For Frank Sinatra's I've Got Your Under My Skin in a duet with Bono, the horns have a slightly lower pitch in the Dallys and it gives off that warmer, more relaxed bass. It doesn't seem to have as deep a soundstage as the LS50s though, but it still has that addicting rhythmic flow which I found quite relaxing and yet engaging at the same time. It's not as hot as the LS50s and yet I'm still drawn to it. Again, the vocals are more forward in the LS50s, but the Dallys really try to reel me in with their unique sound signature. For Nora Jones, don't know why, the LS50s has that more aggressive presentation versus the Dallys wherein it just wants you to hang back and listen from afar. The Dallys are more subtle, more delicate, and in return it gives you lots of microdynamics. At the same time, the LS50 sound really more alive. So in the end, it's really about your preference and how you want to listen to your song. There's really nothing wrong with both of them, it's just really preference. For Alicia Keys' If I Was Your Woman from the MTV Unplugged album, the vocals are up front and fresh in the LS50s and it makes it feel like Alicia Keys is right there beside you. The Dallys play cool and sound more balanced and neutral. You can actually notice a lot more things in the Dallys, but the LS50s has that sharper imaging which makes it sound more exciting. I've often complained that the LS50s makes music sound like a recording, but in this case, it sounds like a live concert against the Dallys. For Pints of Rome by Respighi, the LS50s sound a little bit compressed in comparison to the Dallys, and it's a little bit harder to distinguish the instruments. The Dallys have that relaxed pace, and, it's, and not only can you easily place the instruments where they are, but you can hear a lot more textures as well. So here we have two fantastic speakers and you can't really go wrong with both. Looks wise the daddies are nice, but I still prefer the more modern LS50s. In terms of output, vocals are still the main draw of the LS50s and the Opticons cannot compete with that 
unlike its younger brother, the Zenser ones. The Opticons do have that addicting rhythmic flow which just draws you into the music. The LS50s are the more exciting speaker, but the data retrieval of the Opticons are similarly satisfying as well. As usual, vocals and acoustic are better heard on the LS50s while complex music are better heard in the Opticons. Next we pit Fire Against Ice, the Totem Rainmakers versus the Dali Opticons. The Rainmakers have that V-shaped tuning which makes it one of the funniest speakers I've ever heard. And that sounded better in my head. For trials of the Pass by Subtract, the bass goes deeper and is more solid in the Rainmakers. And it also has a sharper edge and you can easily feel each beat in the Rainmakers. The Daddies have a slower pace and it tries to keep up but it's easily left behind. For I've got you under my skin, the daddies sound very relaxing and the vocals aren't as forward as the Rainmakers. The Rainmakers try to emphasize every point, like the leading edge of each note has a zinc to it, making it sound a bit exciting. Both speakers seem to be at opposite ends, so in the end it's still boils down to your preference, but for me, this is an easy listening song, so I will pick the Dallies. For Nora Jones, again, you have that warmer, relaxing vibe with the Dallies, and yet you still notice every brush stroke, every pluck of the string, every piano note, and every striation in Nora Jones' voice. For Alicia Keys, the stronger, deeper slam in the Rainmakers really put me into the music. Piano notes are highlighted as well, and it makes the daddy sound muted in comparison. But despite sounding relatively muted, the daddies have more overtones and you can hear subtle shifts more. But who cares about that in a song like this? For Pints of Rome, both speakers have roughly the same separation, with the Rainmakers edging out the daddies in terms of soundstage. The Rainmakers also have significantly more zing, more sparkle, more brilliance compared to the laid-back Dallies, which seem to be the audiophatic choice in this song. The Rainmakers are fun, but after listening for a while with the Dallies, I feel like the Rainmakers might be too tiring in the long run. So after my comparison, I feel like I'm playing rock, paper, scissors with myself, you think you find that speaker which really gets you, and then another one comes along which gets you in a different way. There's no perfect speaker for everyone, but there's going to be that perfect speaker for that special someone. And again, that sounded better in my head. Moving along, the totems are the more exciting bunch. They're really upbeat and fun to listen to, while the daddies impress you more with their rhythm and data retrieval. I enjoy them both, but if I really have to choose just one, I would probably go with the Dallies as I'm in a bit of a sentimental mood right now and the Dallies let me bask in their relaxing atmosphere. What I like the most about the Opticons is their rhythm. It seems like they take each sound and just blends it together into an, an organic flow that sounds very, very natural. I don't know how else to describe it, but it's kind of like an automatic watch versus a quartz watch where the automatic watch just sweeps smoothly while the quartz watch ticks. And that smoothness lets you see more into the music. Another thing I like is that they look quite nice too. What I don't like about them is that they could be a little bit more exciting. There are some songs in wherein I was wishing it has had a little bit more bite, a little bit more sparkle. And as it stands, they're very relaxed and you kind of you kind of will fall asleep with them. But then again, that's probably what some other people would like, right? After all, we got speakers to relax. And what I hate about it is that I really, really like the rhythm, but I just find the bass a little bit too loose, lacking a bit of control and grip. And I want it to be tighter. 
But then, I don't know if that would be a good thing because if I make it tighter, it might change the sound signature, it might change the flow. Because right now, given its current bass, it's already very cohesive and very natural sounding. So maybe changing it is, the, is a bad idea. But yeah, I think I've been audio fooled. It's not the perfect speaker, but so oddly satisfying to listen to. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or suggestions, just write them down below. See you in the next video.